How to be a tech reviewer. Most people think it's like this. When actually it's kind of more like this. Now, as much truth as there is to the second part of that, I kind of want to cover in a, a few main points here. Things that if you're growing your own channel, especially here on YouTube, and if you're you know making your own content, as opposed to going the more traditional route of writing for an existing publication. So bear that in mind as I go through my main points. Now, these are things that I picked up from the six and a half years of me doing this uh, kind of full stop, and also the three to three and a half years I've been doing this full time. Now, th this job, it is a job, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time and energy to, to do this, to build your own platform and uh, you know channel to, to be able to create interesting content that people enjoy watching. And as I said, I've been doing this for six and a half years and I still am nowhere near in the kind of upper echelons of successful people on YouTube. In fact, at least at the time of filming anyway, uh, I'm still below 50,000 subscribers at that point. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm no perfect success story. It, it takes a very long time, a lot of energy, a lot of kind of growth and learning to be able to get where you want to go, but it is a fantastic experience. In terms of content production, I would say that the two key things that I would kind of recommend is make interesting content and make content that you enjoy. It's content that you have to, you know, you have to enjoy making it and ideally watching it as well so that you know who your audience is, you actually enjoy doing it on a day-to-day -day basis because it is, you know, if you're doing it full-time, it is a full-time job and it takes a lot of time and energy to do it. So just bear that one in mind as you're going to be throwing a lot of hours into something and you really definitely need to enjoy it. In terms of the interesting content, you can go down the route of kind of chasing analytics to work out what what the best type of content is or what the most relevant thing is, but really finding things that you enjoy, and especially if you can cater to a specific niche, you tend to find a lot quicker success, even if it is still relatively confined success, it's still a lot quicker and a lot more rewarding to see. But of course, you can go a little bit more wide like I personally do and cater to a, a few different niches, and then you end up with a bit more variety in what you can, to, you, you can do videos about, but at the same time, obviously, not necessarily as quick success overall. I would definitely recommend that you do not do this for money. You, this is definitely something you should do for your, you know, kind of as a hobby, as a passion, as something you enjoy with maybe a, a kind of dream to, to do it as a full-time job, but not, you know, you're not chasing the, the dollars if you like, because honestly, even as someone who is kind of, who's made it if you like, and who, who has a full-time job making these videos, uh, it is, at least at my level anyway, not uh, kind of immediately wealth opportunistic. Uh, and bear in mind that the people who you see at the top, they are the 0.1% of all of the people who are trying to, to get where they are. And there's a lot of people who, you know, are in my shoes or even smaller uh, who are not, you know, making a lot of money from it. So just put that one in mind. Now, in terms of getting in touch with companies and getting products from companies, bear in mind that this is a business and it is a business transaction you are doing. It massively helps if you can make friends with the people first, especially if you can, you know, like play games with them, for example, um, or whatever else. It also massively helps if you can meet them face to face. That normally implies going to trade shows and things like that. So in the UK, that's things like the Insomnia Gaming Festival and EGX. And in the USA, obviously, you've got things like CES. And if you can really go all out, then things like Computex are also great. It does depend on your region. You can find more local things for you as well. So just bear that in mind as actually meeting the, the people that you're going to be working with face to face can definitely help. Now, as I mentioned, this is a business transaction and you need to provide them with a good return on investment. If you've just started and you've only got a couple of subscribers and a couple of views, then honestly, it's probably more detrimental to try and contact companies at this point, because honestly, you're not going to provide them that much as a return on investment. Sure, if you turn up at their booth at Insomnia in the UK and you know do a, a quick video of their booth or 
whatever, then sure, that's great for them because they've already spent the money to, you know, kind of be there and you get free content of extra, you know, the, the products that they have available, albeit at a trade show being very noisy and all that sort of stuff. So there's, there's trade-offs there, but I would really, uh, on, the, on the start, I would focus on making interesting content with things you already have or things that you can get a hold of easily rather than trying to immediately start uh, kind of getting products from companies. So as your channel grows and you get a bit more sort of heavily viewed, if you like, you can then start contacting companies or some might even start contacting you. At this point, you do, as I said, need to bear in mind that you're really kind of looking at what return on investment you can give to them. So especially if you're if they're letting you keep the product, for example, do bear in mind that A, that technically counts as a form of sponsorship, although there's uh, kind of uh, differences there. I leave disclaimers in every video description that uh, where I have products provided to me directly for that video um, that the company has given it to me. So just bear that in mind, you could probably do with disclosing that sort of thing. But um, otherwise, you with specifically the kind of interaction between the business, you need to make sure that you know, you're know you giving them a good return on investment for their effectively purchase of your services. Now, I know a few people would like me to touch on sponsor videos here. So I'll kind of give a, a little bit of a brief overview. It could probably be its own topic. So if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments down below. But generally speaking, sponsor videos are as kind of similar to reviews where companies will either contact you or you contact them to pitch a sponsor video. It has to be disclosed both on YouTube and ideally in the video and description, things like that as well. So bear that in mind. But uh, ideally speaking, you would make content that is uh, still something you would make anyway, but that obviously the brand can integrate their message into or whatever um, to, to sort of further promote their products or services or whatever. You can also do in video ad spots, which you see most people like Linus do where they'll just say, you know, and now a message from our sponsor and then talking about a, you know, completely different company to whatever they're talking about in the main video. And again, that will be something that they're paid to do, but at the same time, obviously is disclosed. And the final couple of notes on contacting companies, uh, bear in mind that you need to be respectful of the company and the product, especially if the product that you have is kind of terrible, for example, um, then it's generally good practice to contact the company first because you may be missing some things that like you may be missing some additional software or drivers from, to, to make the product work a little bit better, or just generally speaking, so that you can give your feedback before it goes public. Uh, and while it's not to say that you should you know, hide negative reviews or, or downplay any issues with products, it's generally good to be respectful of issues with products and be uh, at least fair in your reviews of them. Otherwise, you should also probably not pester companies too heavily. If you send a single email and expect them to reply to you instantly, you're probably a bit too high and mighty, but if you've sent 100 emails in a day, that's probably a bit much. And a final note is that you should probably be investing in yourself fairly heavily, especially in your early days, but even as things go on. So for example, I very recently bought this uh, Spider 5 Express, which is a monitor color calibrator and can be used for monitor color testing. And for me, this is gonna be great to sort of up the quality and uh, effectively the information included in monitor reviews. So that's my sort of regular investment, just buying tools that make my videos more interesting, more informative and things like that. I recently upgraded my camera and, and things like that as well. So uh, you do have to invest in yourself here and you know invest in what is essentially your business going forward, especially if you are starting to get a good amount of success. And finally, enjoy yourself. This is all, you know, especially if you're just starting out, it's going to be all for fun anyway. So have a laugh with some friends and make some videos. You know, if you're doing it yourself, then just enjoy yourself, make content you enjoy making and have some fun. That's kind of the, the whole point of this anyway. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you're an aspiring tech YouTuber, feel free to leave a comment down below as well and share the love with uh, each other down there. And uh, Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you want to support me, as I said, this is my full-time job, so thank you very much for making that possible. There are plenty of links in the description, including merch if you fancy a TechMGB t-shirt for some of your tech videos or whatever, um, or whatever else. Uh, there's a Patreon link you can support me directly. You can also check out the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links, which massively help me out. And you can also just subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also check out the other videos, which I'm sure you already know. And otherwise, that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.